If you're a fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show sponsored by Easton Sports. Now the man that knows more about softball than anyone on the planet, your host, Gary Leland. Now if you're watching this episode on YouTube or another video sharing site, Facebook, MySpace, something like that, please check out our website, fastpitch.tv. Not fastpitchtv.com, just fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find all of our past episodes and to keep up with future episodes. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsor, Easton Sports. The truth is, there is a difference. The difference is Easton. Visit their website, too, at www.eastonsoftball.com. Now, if you've been keeping up with the show, then you know that last week I went up to Oklahoma City and went to the College World Series. Took my video camera, took it with me, and started filming. Filmed a lot of episodes while I was there. Now, one of the while I was there, one of the things I did do was I met Aaron Getlecker. Now, Aaron is an assistant coach for the MPF, that's the National Pro Fast Pitch, Washington Glory. Okay. Now, I thought it would be a little change of pace and be kind of nice for me to stay behind the camera for a change. So, what happened is Erin got drafted. She's going to do today's interview for you. And it's a great interview. It's going to be with uh, Michelle Smith. So, from the College World, the Women's College World Series, here's an interview with Olympian and Hall of Famer, Michelle Smith. Take us back to the beginning. When you got into softball, how did you get into it? Well, uh, about six, seven years old, my mom was coaching my older sister, and of course I begged them to let me play, and that's how I first got started. I didn't start to pitch, though, until I was uh, 15, uh, a sophomore in high school, so I started pitching really late. Okay. What other positions did you play other than pitching? I played first base. I played outfield. I actually was a left-handed shortstop for a while, but I knew my career wasn't going <laughs> to probably go real far. Uh, being a left-handed shortstop, and, uh, and then I started to pitch. Very good. Now, you mentioned your mom. Was there mm-hmm. anybody in particular that really helped to inspire you in softball? Um, you know, I just love the bat and ball sport since I was a little kid. didn't matter if it was playing in the neighborhood with the, you know, the other kids or um, playing organized games. I just, anything that had to do with baseball or softball, I, I was loving it. If you had to go back and you had to pick another position other than being a pitcher, mm. What would you be the best at? Well, if I wasn't left-handed, um, I would probably love to have played uh, one of the middle infield positions. So if I was right-handed, middle infield. Being left-handed, uh, if I wasn't a permanent or a, mostly a pitcher, I probably would have uh, said first base. Although I did love the outfield as well. Just, oh, okay. You know, I, you know, I'm one of those people. I'm happy if I'm just on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, in your in your time, you've played against a lot of great players. Mm-hmm. Um, who would you say is the toughest hitter you've ever faced? The toughest hitter I ever faced, um, a lot. I've faced a lot of great hitters because my career was so long. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, Yvonne Gutierrez, who is a great hitter for UCLA, uh, played in women's major fast pitch, very good hitter. Um, Lisa Fernandez, Dot Richardson. I mean, all the names that you, all the people that you could, you know, Kim Marr, all, everyone who's ever played on an Olympic team, um, you could probably name off every one of those athletes um, but you know for me as a lefty I always had a different look at batters than what um, maybe right-handed pitchers had uh, another one Jen Brundage um, very very good hitter but there were a lot of them and um, you know you always just had to try to figure out a way to, to get them out and they beat you sometimes but then sometimes you beat them <laughs> well I think one of the one of the most well-known names right now would be someone like a crystal busto I would always throw her my being a lefty I would always throw her my curveball low and inside and, and she hated that pitch she'd always say Smitty stop throwing me that <laughs> darn curve you know um, but uh, yeah, it's a, and it's a different game too depending on if we were playing at 40 feet or 43 feet when I first started playing with her we were still at 40 40 feet and she was a tough hitter at 40 feet at 43 feet her game just goes to a new level um, because she has so much power and that extra three feet, you know, it's, it's tough to beat her. Right. So would you say you or Crystal has the upper hand? Um, I think because I'm left-handed, I had the upper hand. Um, but only because I'm left-handed. I think against anyone else, she just peppers them. Uh, and, and again, I, I mostly threw at her when it, we were at, uh, at 40 feet. So it's a different game. I mean, most pitchers have the upper hand at 40 feet. Um, but Crystal Bustos, when she's on, if you have to throw the ball at her at 43 feet, 
you know, more times than not, uh, she's going to beat you. So you just have to hope she gets herself out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, now you mentioned the change in the pitching distance. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the years that you've played, what, are, what do you think is one of the craziest rule changes that have ever gone on? Um, I, you, mm. Internationally yeah, or... Yeah, in, internationally, in, the, the, the 20 second clock to speed up the game, um, you know, although it helped a lot, it made a difference in Beijing. Um, for athletes, for those of us that played that elite game at 40 feet, it was so difficult to pitch, to hit at that level, that when they went back to 43 feet, it opened the pool up. There are many more athletes that can play at the elite level at 43 feet than they can at 40 feet. Um, so that's really why the U.S. was, you know, just so overpowering in, in Athens. Besides the fact that we were great, the rest of the world wasn't used to, to playing the ball, playing softball at 43 feet. Um, but, you know, I think that one of, the, one of the things about our sport is that we're kind of like uh, always moving. We're like a, an amoeba, kind of always moving around and always changing things. Baseball's so traditional, you never see changes. Softball, we don't like something, we change it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mentioned, you know, the international scene. Um, you've been to a lot of great places mm -hmm. throughout the world. Mm -hmm. If you had to, to pick one of your favorite places, whether it be a city or a, or a stadium to play in, what would that be? I loved, uh, the Olympic arena is just always something special. Any, any Olympic games, um, when you walk into that Olympic stadium, doesn't matter what country it's in, when you represent your country, it's, uh, it's a special thing. But playing in Sydney was always a lot of fun because you knew that every Australian fan was just going to give you the hardest time ever. And uh, so that, that, that's always a lot of fun. Um, I loved playing in Japan. I played professionally there for 16 years, and uh, the Japanese fans are wonderful. They're, they're great people, and they appreciate really good play. Uh, it's always fun to play in Europe, although the Europeans don't understand the sport as, as much. Um, but I would have to say my favorite two places would be uh, to play in uh, Australia or Japan. Very good. Now, do you have any supersti superstitions or um, um, traditions that you follow before yeah, you take the field? I'm more traditional. It's not as much superstitional. I just, I'm real big on having a, um, a routine. And so I do always jump over the foul lines, but instead of that being a superstition, it was my way of saying, okay, it's time to go to work. It was my a cue, physical cue, to say, okay, it's time for me to, to play ball. So that was always my thing. It was like I was jumping into my arena, almost like it was a three-dimensional. Um, you know, I, I have, did I have favorite things I like to wear? Absolutely. You know, this, these sliders were more comfortable than my other sliders, so I wore those. Did I wear them because it was superstitious? No, they just were the most comfortable ones I wore. So for me, it was more about um, routine. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in your equipment bag mm -hmm. on game day, uh -huh. What's always in your equipment bag? Uh, always two gloves, probably about 10 pairs of batting gloves, um, three or four bats, uh, um, rosin, um, probably some gels in case my arm gets tight uh, to keep it loose, um, probably some sort of food because I love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. What, what is one of your, uh, you know, during the game snacks that you like? I think bananas are always great, any of the goos or gels, but um, honey is also really good for pitchers to eat because it's, uh, it's very natural. Very good. You've played with many different teammates mm -hmm. um, over the time. Um, what is, is there something, if we could go back and ask those, those players um, what they remember the most about you, what would you want them to say and how would you want them to, to describe you as a teammate? Um, I was probably tough, intense, but willing to... Uh, willing to give and help anyone. If they needed extra BP, I'd throw them BP. If they needed extra practice, I'd you know, work with them. Um, so I, I tried to, to really make my teammates better. Uh, I don't know if they always got that <laughs> when I was playing, but um, yeah, I was real big like that. And, and that's one of the things that the Japanese knew about me really well is that a lot of my teammates, are, I think one of my biggest goals was to help my teammates become the best athletes that they could be. Very good. Now, you mentioned that you keep some gels in case your arm gets mm -hmm, sore. Mm -hmm. um, you've been playing for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the toughest part about keeping yourself in great physical condition to play at such an elite level? Well, the game isn't just, uh, you know, the, the four or six months you're on the field. It's year-round. And if you want to be a great athlete, you have to train year-round, and, uh, and that's physical fitness. And a lot of athletes think that they can work between the lines, and that's going to make them a good ball player. And it doesn't cut it anymore. If you want to be an elite athlete, if you want a scholarship, if you want to win a state championship, a college championship, a gold medal, you have to learn to work really hard in the off season. So that means running, cycling. It means uh, cardiovascular fitness. It means building lean body mass as well as also um, having a level of fitness where your endurance just can take you further uh, and allow you to compete longer than the other people that are on the field with you. Right. Now, when you finish your career, 
Um, you know, you've been playing for quite a while, and I'm sure you're going to continue to play as long as you can. Uh, when we look back on Michelle Smith's legacy years down the road, what are what are some of the things you're most proud of, and that you want us to remember your legacy as? Um, that I never stopped learning. I, I I always I love to teach the game when I'm broadcasting for ESPN. I love to teach the game as if I'm speaking to one student athlete out there that is trying to become a better ball player. So for me, it's about teaching the game. Um, sharing my passion of the sport with potentially new fans of the game that are watching for the first time, but really about learning and teaching and, and just feeling like every day I step on the field, I'm going to be a better athlete. Great. Well, if you were to leave us with a few words of advice for those young players out there that are chasing their dreams today, uh, what would those be? A few words of advice. It would be uh, to persevere, uh, to never give up. If you have a passion, if you have something that you love, whether or not it's softball or math or religion or whatever it is just to never give up that means in japanese to always fight hard <laughs> well there you have it folks uh, michelle thank you very much thank for you. joining us today and i want to give you a personal thank you from the softball world you've okay. done amazing things for us thank you. um you know you've taken our sport to a whole new level and it's great to be a part of it so we thank you very much Absolutely. coming to you from the world series here in oklahoma city back to you gary Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed the interview. Great job, Aaron, on the interview. Before we close, I do want to say something about Michelle. Michelle told me she would have time for an interview after she finished broadcasting her game at the uh, College World Series. She's a broadcaster for ESPN. But it would have to be quick, and after her, t her time was over there, she'd come out and do it, but it had to be quick, as she didn't have much time. Well, during the game, when it came to the end of the game, I think the game went into several overtimes. I figured the overtimes used all of Michelle's free times up and that we weren't going to get to see her at all. Then when she came out of the ESPN announcer's booth, she stayed and signed autographs and talked to every fan who wanted one, taking her time, not rushing anyone. Everybody who was a fan of Michelle's had a great time and, and enjoyed talking to her. But I knew this also took up most of our time. So after signing all those autographs, after the the extra inning, signing all those autographs, she came over and said, let's get the interview done. So she still had made time for us to do our interview. And for that, I personally like to say thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you doing that. As you saw, the sun was going down. It got darker as the show went on. So <laughs> we were very much just catching it by the wire, barely getting it done. So like I said, I want to give Michelle an extra special thank you for uh, taking the time to making this interview happen. A lot of people wouldn't have gone through that effort that she went through. So I really appreciate it. Hey, don't forget to tell your friends to watch the Fast Pitch TV show and tell them about our website, fastpitch.tv. Check out our page on Facebook and become a fan. Just go to Facebook and search Fast Pitch TV. And I'd like to end it with our sponsor, Easton Sports. Thanks for watching. This bat's great. Great pop. Nice room zone. Feels good on the hands. The sweet spot is pretty nice. Um, it's not as small as some other bats. Even if you don't hit it exactly on it, the ball still travels as far as it's supposed to. 